Hello everyone. This is a third video of five part series on inventory management system. In the first video, I have provided the introduction of inventory management system, all the Azure services, which we are going to use in this project, their integration, as well as the workflow. In the second video, I have created the Azure's blob storage account and the Azure Python function app, which means whenever a CSV file is uploaded into blob storage account, automatically the Python function app will be triggered. For now, I have provided the bare minimal code, which is just showing that a file is uploaded into the blob storage account. So if you haven't checked these two videos, I would highly recommend to go check these videos and come back here. And for others in this video, we'll be creating the Azure SQL server, then the SQL database on it. And after that, we'll create the table matching with the CSV file. For security, we'll deploy a key vault service, which will connect to function app using the managed identity. SQL database credentials will be saved as the secrets in the key vault. And finally, I'll add more Python code to the function app so that whenever the CSV file is uploaded to the blob storage account, the Python function app will read the CSV file and then update the SQL database with the contents of the file. So let's check the step-by-step -step implementation in the lab now. Let's create a SQL database. Look for SQL database. Create. I'll use the same resource group so it will be easy to decommission. RG project. Database name. Inventory database. 01. There is no server right now. So let's create a database server. This should be unique. So let's check inventory update server 001. That's good. It's available. Location will be Australia East. And we'll use the SQL authentication here. And let's provide SQL admin as the user. And let's provide the password. So workload environment will be development. That's all good. And LRS will be the backup storage redundancy. For the networking, let's provide the public endpoint. However, in public endpoint, we are not adding any IP address for now. But let's allow the Azure services to access the server. Next security, nothing to change here. And just review and create and create. The deployment has started now. I'll pause the video and we'll be back once the deployment is done. Deployment is complete now. We'll go to the deployment details. First, the SQL server is created, then the connection, connection policies, database, and the firewall rules are updated. Let's go to the resource. So this is the SQL database. And if we'll go to query editor and try to log in, it will fail because my public IP is not added. So I'll quickly add my public IP. Now the SQL database firewall rules are updated. And I'll try again and this time it should be success. And perfect. So now I'll quickly show you the CSV file which we are uploading. So this is how the CSV file looks like. There are different product IDs. 123 P001, 2345. Then different product names, product A, B, C, D, E. Then the category, electronics, home appliance, books, the quantity in stock, the number, and then the price. So these are the values which have to be updated in the SQL database from the CSV file. And for that, we need to create a table and the schema. So let me quickly go to query and copy paste it. So we are creating a table with the name of products. Product ID is varchar, it will be a primary key, product name, quantity in stock will be integer and the price will be in decimal. So let's run this and perfect. The table is created as you can see product table and the different schemas. So now the next step is to create a Azure key vault. 
let's go to Azure Key Vault. Create a new key vault. I'll use the same resource group RG project. Inventory project key vault 001. Australia East. Pricing tier standard. Let's leave it for seven days. We'll use the role based access control instead of the vault access policy. So let's select that. All network. Ribbon, create and create. The deployment has started. I'll pause the video and we'll be back once the deployment is done. Deployment is complete now. Let's go to Azure Key Vault. And if I'll go to the secrets in the objects, I'll not be able to view anything because my user doesn't have role based access control to view the secrets. So let's go to IM, add role assignment, and I'll look for key vault secret officer so that I can manage the secrets. I'll select my user ID. Give you an assign and assign. So now the role assignment is done. And if I'll go back to the secrets, let's wait for a few seconds and perfect. As you can see, there are no secrets available, but I'm not getting the error that I can't even see the secrets. So now to use in the function app, we need to create few secrets. If we'll go to the Azure database, SQL databases. And if we'll go to settings, connection strings, because we'll be using the ODBC, there are four values which we need to save. One is the server, which provides the detail of the server, the database name, user ID, and the password. And using all these values, function app will create a connection string. But instead of providing all these values in the environment variables or the function app directly, we will provide these as the secrets in Azure Key Vault. So let's start. Let's go to Key Vault, generate a secret. First, first start with SQL server name. Go back here, copy the server name and the port to create. Another one will be database name. Let's copy the database name here. Create. Third one will be SQL username why I'm using the specific name because this is what I'm going to use in the function app. So that's the reason I'm specifically providing these names and the secret value is from the connection string. The SQL admin and finally the SQL password. And all these four secrets are created. But the problem here is function app doesn't have access on the key vault secrets. So let's go to function app. And enable the managed identity, specifically system assigned managed identity. And using the system assigned managed identity, we can provide role based access control to the object ID of the function app. Let's go to permissions, add role assignment, select the scope as key vault. This is the only subscription I have. This is the resource and let's provide the key vault secret user. 
So that means the function app can read the secrets. There you go. Save. And the role assignment is added. So now the last step here is to update the function app code. And in the function app, we have to first reference the key vault so that these secrets can be pulled in, then make a connection with the SQL database, read the file from the blob storage account, and then update those values into the SQL database. And for this, let's go back to our Visual Studio code and start with importing more variables. So pandas in the Python is used for reading the CSV file. Python ODBC is for making the connection. And we'll import the OS so that the environment variables can be pulled in. Then the Azure identity because we are using the managed identity and the key vault secrets. But all these cannot be imported easily. And for that, we need to define the requirements.txt. And these are the four values which we have to define. So Python ODBC should be installed using pip, pandas, Azure identity, and Azure key vault secrets. Let's save this. Save this too. So now import is done. So the next step here is to make a connection with the key vault. So we are getting the secrets from the key vault and we have to provide the key vault URL. And this key vault URL, either we can provide here directly or we can provide it in environment variables. So let's use the environment variable for this setting. Copy this, go back to Azure functions environment variables, add a new environment variable, which will be key vault URL. In another tab, I'll look for key vault and copies URL. So that's the vault URI. Let's copy it and save. Apply, apply again and confirm. So now the environment variables are saved. Now let's go back to our code. Now it's using the managed identity credentials, which will pick by itself because we have provided the role based access control. And we are using the try and accept so that in case if it's failing, we should get all this in the logs. So this is to retrieve the secrets from the key vault. Now we have to define which secret should be retrieved. But before that, let's read the CSV file first. So in the same definition, now we are trying to read the CSV file and we are reading the CSV file using the pandas, which will read the CSV file. If the reading is done successfully, then it will update the logs. Otherwise you will get an error. Another step is to get the secrets for the SQL database. So as I have already provided the secrets with the name SQL server name, database name, SQL username, SQL password. So all these secrets will be fetched from Key Vault directly. And for logging, it's really important that we log everything. And if in case the secrets are not being fetched, then you should be getting an error. So that's all good. So now we have set up the Azure Key Vault connection and we have grabbed the secrets from the Azure Key Vault. Now the third step is to connect to the SQL database. And here you go. We are connecting to the SQL database that will be in the logs. And these are the specific values which are provided. We can even save the whole connection string, but it will be easy to provide those separate values because in case you want to change any specific value like the driver, ODBC driver that you can change here. So a connection string will be created here and then the connection will be made. And if there is any error that will be locked. Now the last step here is now the contents of the CSV file should be updated into product table of the database. Now we are using the upsert. The reason is in case there are some similar values, we should not be getting the warning. So the product ID, product name, category, quantity in stock, and the price will be updated. And if there are any duplicate values, so it will not throw any error. So that's all. Let's save this and deploy the same to the Azure function. Hopefully there is no error. Let's go back to Azure extension, deploy to Azure. There is only one function app which is available. And let's deploy it. This will overwrite everything and let's deploy. 
it's running its checks first cleaning up now it's running the pip install dependencies and then push all the changes into the function app and once that will be done it will show a success and then we'll check the function app if the function is showing correctly or not function app is deployed successfully as you can see here there is a success message and let's go back to azure portal go to function app click here and if you'll see the function here that means function app is successful if you don't see the function here that means there is some error and perfect you can see the function here now click on this function go to the logs and let's connect it to the live logs and time being go to the storage account containers data container let's delete these files Let's quickly check. We are connected now for the live logs and let's upload the file again. New CSV and upload. Let's quickly check the logs again. Perfect. So as you can see, there are white messages. There are invocation. Blob trigger has happened and then all these messages are the get request from the Azure Key Vault. All the tokens are received. Once this is done, finally you will see all the different messages like it connected to SQL database. The connection was successful. Then it updated the different values for products 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 based on the CSV and the database connection was closed and finally the whole function was successful. That's perfect. Now to confirm whether this worked successfully or not, let's go back to our SQL database. SQL database. Go to query data. Log into our database. And there is a product table. Let's run the query. Select star from products and perfect as you can see these were the same values which were in the csv file which is here and all these values are updated here so that means our services blob storage python function app key vault as well as the sql database are configured properly and are working as expected so that's all for this video. In the next video, I'll be configuring the logic app where two tasks will be created. First one where the post request from the function app will trigger an HTTP request, which is an HTTP trigger. And once that is done, an email will be sent to the user. Thanks for watching this video and see you in the next video.